Good morning, folks. So my corn is done. It's, <laughs> it's completely dry for the most part. Some of these stalks are still green and vibrant, but I had a pretty bad corn year this year. I've explained it in a previous video. I just planted them way too far apart and they didn't get the pollination that they needed. there Because they, they self-pollinate from these guys. This is the male part. And then the corn silk, which comes out of the top of a corn cob, is the female part. And every single one of these strands has to get pollinated from pollen up here on this flower um, so that each kernel develops. And I just had spotty, sporadic kernels, <laughs> um, which I'll show you guys in a second. And honestly, I've taken way too long to come out here and harvest this corn. Most of it is drying up. Um, but I'm not here to eat the corn anyways. What I'm going to do is harvest all of these cobs that I can find and pull out the corn silk, the stuff that isn't dirty and gross and still a little bit moist. And I'm gonna be harvesting the corn silk for tea. So let's get all of these corn cobs off of these plants. We will take them inside and shuck them and I will tell you all about the benefits of corn silk. I'm actually gonna shuck this corn out here in the garage. Um, first off, it's really messy, <laughs> and I don't wanna clean up more than I have to in the house. But secondly, there are tons of ants out there in the garage, so I don't want a ton of ants in the house too. And <laughs> these corn, <laughs> they're so pitiful. Oh my goodness. All right. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at how terrible that is. There's like three whole kernels on this corn. I'm gonna break off the tip. And this is the corn silk that we will be harvesting. And I'm just going to pull it off here, outside, and then take the finished corn silk inside. Now I do want the cleanest stuff. It's not like the end of it is bad or anything, but anything that's been dried out could possibly be dusty from blowing wind. I don't need just this little tuft of corn silk, so I'll leave this for the chickens with the rest of the cobs. <laughs> for the three kernels they're gonna get to eat. And then I will just pull all this inside stuff out. So corn silk has been used medicinally, historically, by Native Americans and in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. Ooh, that's a good one. See? So there's this brown on top, and then the green on the bottom, and I'm just going to rip that brown stuff off, leave it for the chickens, and take the good green stuff. Now medicinally, the best time to harvest your corn silk is going to be before pollination occurs. <laughs> As I explained before, the corn silk itself is the female part of the plant. So these get pollinated and then kernels are formed inside the corn stalk. But unfortunately, if you go around and harvest all of your corn silk before the plant gets pollinated, you're going to have no corn. <laughs> So if you want to grow corn silk just purely for corn silk and you don't want any corn to happen, then by all means, absolutely harvest your corn silk before any pollination occurs and that will be the best, strongest medicine. But it works just as fine if you get the corn silk after the corn has been pollinated. That way you get two uses out of your plant.
Now the corn silk color is going to depend on the type of corn. As you can see, I grew a an heirloom corn from goingtoseed.org and it's a multicolored corn. So this one right here, this is gorgeous. This has purple kernels and it also has purple dyed silks. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with using this. It's just going to make for a more colorful tea. And these are nice and moist, still fresh. Now I will link several research articles below, but I'm just gonna give you an overview of what um, scientific research and anecdotal evidence has shown about corn silk. Scientists have found that corn silk contains rich flavonoids, polysaccharides, and terpenoids, which possess a variety of biological activities. And these are going to include antioxidant, hypoglycemic, anti-cancer, antibacterial, and a couple more. Now, culturally, it it has been used for the treatment of cystitis, edema, kidney stones, it's a diuretic, um, various prostate disorders, and urinary infections. This way it soothes and relaxes the lining of the bladder, hence reducing irritation and increasing urine secretion. It's also shown anti-fatigue activity in mice. One study demonstrated that corn silk can actually elevate exercise intolerance and, and then be anti-fatigue. It has demonstrated strong antidepressant activity in two separate studies. And it also possesses excellent antioxidant activity and antibacterial activity, mostly due to those flavonoids it contains. So here I have my corn silk and it's not a whole lot. I don't want that piece. It's not a whole lot with all those cobs. And once you've harvested your corn silk, you can preserve it in a couple different ways. Now, if you really, if you wanna make a medicinal tincture, you can do that one of two ways. You can make a fresh tincture or you can wait for these to dry out and then make a tincture with the dried corn silk. The ratios for those are gonna be different. So if you're making a fresh tincture with like moist, fresh plant matter, you're gonna want a 50-50 ratio by weight to volume of 100 proof alcohol or vodka. So I would get the mass in grams of this and then use twice as much vodka to make a fresh tincture. I prefer to make dry tinctures, so I'm going to let these dry out before I make a tincture with them. But you also don't have to make a tincture at all. If you've never done one, don't know anything about it, or you just don't want to use a tincture, you can absolutely use this as a tea. You can also eat it fresh, <laughs> though it will disappear a lot quicker if you use it that way. So you can make a fresh tea. You can just put this straight into some hot water and make a tea like that. But for my purposes, because I've already harvested some out of a few corn cobs I picked a week ago, um, I'm just going to let these dry out and then I can store them in a jar over the winter and drink the tea whenever I need. Now as for drying, um, you can do that a couple ways as well. I have a dehydrator. I will not be using a dehydrator to dry these out. These little corn silks are so tiny and doesn't take a whole lot for them to dry out. So I don't want to waste the electricity or the space to dehydrate this on maybe it might take up two dehydration trays. If you do use a dehydrator and it has the ability to have temperature settings, I would suggest it on the lower setting just so you don't burn these to a crisp. Uh, but like I said, they are perfectly fine air dried. I air dried my corn silk last week, which is right here. And now it's nice and dry and a little crunchy. I prefer to keep them whole. You could chop this up um, into pieces and dry it that way, but I just prefer to keep mine whole. That way it's in one big mass and whenever I wanna make a tea from it, I can just reach in and tear off exactly how much I need. So we are going to spread this out to make sure everything gets equal 
air time. It's also because when they're all long strings, they kind of just mat together, so it's easier to keep pieces from falling through the cracks if you're going to dehydrate it. And that's it. It's so simple. <laughs> So I've already gone over the health benefits, the medicinal benefits of corn silk with you. What I'm going to mostly use this for is urinary tract health, um, things like UTIs or stuff like that. I, I may make a tincture out of this for like some very strong dosing medicine if I ever need it, but otherwise I will just absolutely use it as a tea whenever I feel the urge to have some corn silk tea. And from this, this will dehydrate and I'll put it in a jar and I will store it with all of my other medicinal herbs in my pantry until the time that I need it. Now, I've never used corn silk from like store-bought corn unless you have a handle on where your corn came from and whether it's organic and non-GMO. Corn is one of the most <laughs> uh, GMO crops and sprayed crops in the United States. And I just wouldn't wanna be ingesting that, especially in a tea form. Most corn is Roundup ready and they just spray Roundup willy-nilly through the fields, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want um, to drink Roundup tea. <laughs> I would highly suggest that if you do this and you don't grow your own corn, be sure to find somewhere local or somewhere that you can find organic corn and that you know is not sprayed, doesn't have any pesticides, and you're not going to be putting things other than corn silk in your body <laughs> that you don't want in your body. But other than that, um, that is it. It is so simple. It's one of the least known medicinal herbs that's available that has a lot of studied health benefits. I will link um, a study down below as many studies as I can find, but there's one in particular that I know of that talks about scientifically the health benefits of corn silk. I'm pretty big on science, so that will be there for you guys if you would like to dabble in some literature. But thank you for joining me today, and I will catch you on the next one.